if I can talk about just biology for a moment, any living organism from a single cell to a complex human being, where is that moment of transformation? It's when the organism gets knocked off balance somehow. And in that attempt or need to regain equilibrium, to go back into balance, that's where change is. You either end up in exactly the same place or you end up somewhere else. And that can happen unconsciously or can happen consciously. And so, you know, in, in, in my work, this isn't just about individual organisms, but if we recognize that a community is a living organism, then part of the role of the theater is to knock that larger living organism off balance with good, powerful art. And then the interactive part of the event, the forum theater, tries to find a way to regain equilibrium in, a, in new and innovative ways that are healthier, that are more safe, uh, you know, depending on what the subject matter is. We know as individuals, if we don't express ourselves, we get sick. If we keep it all bottled up inside us, eventually we're going to get sick. In the same way as our bodies are made up of cells and make up the living organism of our bodies, communities are made up of people that make up the living organism of what I've been calling the living community. The way living communities used to express themselves was through song, dance, drama, this primal language that, like Boal used to say, belongs to all of humanity, not only those who are privileged enough to stand in the light. Recently, in the evolution of humankind, and yeah, by that I mean the last couple hundred years, that activity, that cultural activity, has become commodified, along with everything else. And so now we buy music, we buy dance, we buy television, etc. We pay strangers to tell us stories about strangers. And when do we get together as living communities, not to tell one person's story or another person's story, that's not what I mean, but our collective stories. The answer, of course, is to a very large degree. We don't. And in the same way that people get sick, communities get sick. I think the proof of that is everywhere we look. And so invitations come to enter a living community and uses this, this, this theatrical language to help the community storytell at a collective level. When I started doing this work, I was really focused on the individual details of a person's story. So if person X put up an image, a tableau out of their own lived experience, the methodology for me was to explore that person's moment. I'm not so interested in doing that anymore. We're not looking at the image to serve the image maker. I think it's much richer for everybody in the room if the image maker is willing to offer that moment as a gift to the living community. It's an image. So I'm interested in our perceptions of that image. I'm now asking that image maker not to explain the image. That really shuts down the dialogue, in fact, in the room. So the image maker actually takes a huge amount away from all these different perceptions about that moment. But we get to work with the larger consciousness in the room about this this image about an issue that we're all struggling with. And all of the work is like that now. It's if a group of people come together to make a play, we're not creating that play to serve the people making the play. It isn't therapy for them. We're working together.
because they have expertise and they're creating a gift to the larger community, to the larger consciousness that's going to enter the room so that we can work on that image. A play is also an image that has many, many, many images in it in a way so that collectively we can problem solve around issues that we all share. 